Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from beautiful Waikiki Beach. I'm looking out right now at a catamaran sailing out towards Diamond Head. Uh, there's good surf today here in Oahu. My wife and I are going to go out and go tandem surfing uh, in about an hour or so. That, I don't know if people know what that is, but that's where you tandem surf with your bride and you do these uh, extreme lifts. You, I, I kind of surf and I hold her up and she does all these different uh, beautiful lifts on the surfboard. So we're going to go be doing that it's actually how cindy and i fell in love we fell in love uh, on a tandem surfboard so we're gonna be right back we have a great guest with us this is the bear Wozniak adventure welcome to the bear Wozniak adventure kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack explore the grittiness of manly spirituality gain traction in the virtues zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, my my uh, publisher, Sophia, always wants to re me to remind you of my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? My wife is a barrel racer, or was a barrel racer. She's a rodeo cowboy girl type, a trick rider too. She used to barefoot water ski and skydive. And of course she surfs with me. So she's kind of a, I call her a tough chick, kind of a radical girl. But we were driving along the, the coast here, uh, going around Diamond Head about two years ago. And she said, you got to listen to this song. And it was a song that the, the, the chorus were, where have all the cowboys gone? And I'm just a huge Louis L'Amour fan. He was the, the great Western writer. His his hero, heroes were always virtuous, and the women in his books were always so strong, uh, often, though, finding themselves in a vulnerable position, hence the, the need for a hero. But I have all of his Western novels right here. And so my new book, I quote Louis L'Amour in the, in the realm of primarily the cardinal virtues, and we use that to get traction and kind of a new look at what it means to really be a man. Uh, men have got to stop excusing themselves uh, for, the, for what, who they are and the way God wired them you know men are come a factory loaded with certain uh certain gifts and callings and one of those is really to be a hero and one of those is to protect a woman and one of those is to rise up to the woman's expectations as a man to be all the man that that the woman wants her to be so women who are listening go to amazon.com go to deepadventure.com go to sophia go to go to Don barnes and noble uh, books a million all, your favorite catholic store wherever you you can and buy this book and read it and then give it to your sons, place it on the coffee table for your husband, give it to your brother-in-laws. Our mama bears are the biggest, the biggest uh, impact we have is via our mama bears. So get this book into the hands of your men. And, and I strongly recommend women that you read it, especially have a, a daughter who's coming of age. Read this so she can get a grasp on what a real man is. I know she sees her father and understands that, but this really kind of lays it down, mm -hmm. like what she, her expectations should be as a, as a woman what she needs to look for in a man. So 12 rules for manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Your name, right, Dominic? Yes, sir. Yeah, we well have done. Dominic. In, we have Dominic and Neo here. He's a, he's a, uh, I'm, I'm going to just give you his background if I can do it just briefly. He's an IT project management consultant. Have you ever watched the IT crowd on British television, Dominic? <laughs> watched it a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, uh, we, I, I've watched it. I've watched every episode 10 times. Yeah. And there's that yeah. one episode where, where Jane is looking for another. What does he stand for? Tell us. Information technology. Okay, so we know he's the real thing. He's a certified coach with International Coaching Federation. I want to ask you about that too later. Mm -hmm. Masters of Arts in, in Pastoral Studies from St. Bernard's School of Theology. He serves as a member of the Board of Directors for the Can Canadian Renewal Ministries. That's a part of the Catholic charismatic renewal, which I am, I was actually very involved with back in the day, back in the wild west days of the Catholic charismatic renewal. He serves as a member on the board of directors of Catholic Christian outreach. He's the creator. This is what's so cool. This is why we really wanted to get Dominic on our show today. Uh, he's the creator of dialogue with God video prayer course, which has been diocesan approved. That's what it is, Dominic. It's, and, and many other things I can't list them all, but, that's really what it's all about is this ongoing dialogue on this adventure, this story that God has unfolding with us. So welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, Dominic. Great to be here. I'm honored honored to be on your program. You are? 
I am absolutely. I watched it. I listened to it. It's it's, it's yeah. cool. It's great to be here. Well, we're stoked to have you. You know, Mark became a member of, of Bears Man Cave, our non Facebook community, and our our three year school of manliness. And he said, "You got to get you got to get my brother on." So uh, so you know, we jumped on the chance when we found out more about you. So hey, tell us a little bit about your background. I, I'm always I, I, you always you know because with God, life is an adventure. There's a there's a journey. There's a story that's unfolding. And uh, it's not by accident. And God is always in there to kind of guide us along our path, trying to direct us when we bump into walls, which way to go. Uh, tell us about your your journey with the Lord. You're just your personal life, too. We'd like to hear the background on you. Yeah, I mean, I was born and raised Catholic and uh, make a long story very short. Uh, wasn't really participating very much in the faith. My My wife had her conversion experience in 1992. And um, watching watching a Donut Man video, actually, uh, Catholic uh, kids, uh, youth uh, entertainer, oh, okay, and had a had a crazy uh, you know uh, conversion experience on on an episode with respect to Easter and Good she Friday. She did, or you? She did, or you did? She did. She That's did. so cool. Come yeah, to the Lord as a child, right? Yeah. And she went from that really quickly uh, right into her Catholic Bible and reading the scriptures and you know, growing very rapidly in her faith. And, you know, next thing you know, she was speaking to uh, other other women and, and other, and then going to faith nights and, uh, you know, praying with them on the phone. So all this type of stuff was going on in the home and I didn't really get it. And I wasn't really participating in it. And, uh, but she was growing quite rapidly in her faith. And I, I can't, I was a little bit uncomfortable with it. You know, uh, I didn't know if it was Catholic. I didn't really even know what Catholic was to tell you the truth, but Mm -hmm. Um, I was uncomfortable with it, but I tell you what, after a few months, I, I noticed the changes in her and I was struggling at the time in 1992. I mean, I, I, I busted up my body a little bit in sports. I was oh, really what struggling. Did what did you do? What happened? I did my ACL. Well, how did you do that? It better be a good hockey. story. Yeah. Playing hockey. I've, beat the I've, heard of, I've heard of hockey. I mean, hockey is for wimps. You know why? Cause I see you guys up there in Canada. You have that stick to hold you up so you don't fall. That's cheating, right? Uh, yeah. Anybody can skate if you got a stick so you don't fall. Not really, sir. <laughs> That's the trick <laughs> how it works. It's like football at 70 miles an hour, really. It's full contact. But I uh, I had some skill with my stick, and I, I kind of faked the goalie out a little bit so much that he fell actually forward and landed right on my leg. ACL. That took out my ACL. So I, I had other issues too from playing basketball. So I was struggling physically. I was struggling at work. I was struggling with my my friends were moving and getting married and leaving kind of thing and moving around. And uh, I was just struggling in life. I was kind of wondering what it was all about. So while my wife is growing, I, you know, I decided to to do my own little personal search. You know, here I have a math and computer science degree. So obviously I, I had to know factually whether God existed, whether Jesus existed. Did he die on a cross? And if that was all okay, I mean, did he really rise from the dead? So here, months and months after my wife's conversion, I'm kind of just reading books and doing a lot of apologetic study. And I I mean, ultimately, to tell you the truth, there's three parts to my conversion story. And the first one was, you know, but when it comes to the resurrection and you kind of get into that particular debate, it's like, yeah, I mean, my choices were either those apostles were hypnotized and that's why they kept saying they saw him risen or, you know, as the, as you know, maybe the Islamic teaching is that someone else went on the cross of the likeness of Jesus. And when I looked at the options available to me, it was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. And I'm not buying that hypnotism argument. Like, I mean, I think these guys saw it, they believed it. And they, other well, than John, they paid for it with their lives. Right. And they were, they were scared to death other than John on, on the when when Jesus was taken to the cross. They, they weren't like, well, let me connive a way to how can we make this look like he rose from the dead? Those guys were hiding out, man. They were other afraid. John. John was Yeah, they were afraid. Up until Pentecost, they were obviously afraid. And so that moment, I remember that night, uh, you know, in my room on my own, and I thought, wow, I and, and having a little bit of a goosebump even and thinking, I believe this. You know, I, I believe this. And I went and mentioned that to Jenny and we were going to mass. I mean, I was going to mass. I wasn't really paying attention. For me, it was like get out of there as soon as possible because football's on at one o'clock. But like, what I mean, you what you guys watch football in Canada too? Well, here we're in Niagara. Right? We're like forty five minutes from Buffalo. Well, you're further south than a lot of America, right? You're, you're, oh you're yes, down, yeah. yes. I'm supposed absolutely. to go speaking. I'm supposed to speak up near Niagara, I think. 
they've kind of invited me to come up in that neck of the woods, Saginaw or someplace up like that. Yeah, yeah. great place because we yeah. were 45 minutes from Toronto and like 45 minutes from Buffalo and it's Bill's country up here. So yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot of there's, there's football there's a lot of hockey. Super Bowl losses that we're still dealing oh. with. Oh yes. But um, you know, we, we got to take a break here in a moment and we'll come back. I want to, we, we'll, we'll catch up where this is. Sure. What your story is telling me is I want to listen, listen to this, to this mama bears. You have, you, you know, the Lord, you love the Lord. Women so often are like kindling the, the, the Lord sparks them and they're just responsive and they grow in the fire flames. And then they have the husband that seems to have put God on the shelf. He doesn't understand it. Mm. This is, this is the way God does it. Ladies. You just be kindling. You you continue to fan that faith into flame, and uh, and uh, pray for your husband and and stand by him. Uh, make sure you 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 maintain his dignity. And in time, uh, this story that's unfolding here with us with Dominic, it will happen. Men are kind of like big old oaks. It takes maybe a woman that that will just continue to fan the flame of faith in their home until he catches on fire, and then he's gonna then he's gonna be burning hot. And long. We'll be right back with Dominic and Nao. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have a guest with us today from Canada, uh, the tropical part, though, right, Dominic? And now you're, you're down in the southern part of Canada. Absolutely. Wonderful here. Not Hawaii, down, but, but pretty close. <laughs> down in Buffalo. You know, speaking of which, Father Larry Richards was here in town this last weekend and and uh, i picked him up for breakfast yesterday morning and you know he had had me speak at his their his their conference there in lake erie he comes here to hawaii he has me go up there in march Ooh. Yeah. you know and i told the guys when i come up i will not be outside any more than 90 seconds during the whole time i'm there i don't have a jacket you know got my aloha shirt and a light sweatshirt let, let, so and so you know what they did it they had they they were lined up when I came out of the lobby. Boom! I'm in the car. I'm, you know they they kept they they protected me. So beautiful area, Lake Erie. I wish I could have. I was. I they put me at a great hotel up there. It's beautiful country up there in Michigan and that area of Canada. But I'm just a wimp. I can't. I'm not as manly as you guys are. So you're telling us about in winter. you're telling us about this journey uh, of faith that really began with your 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 wife began to glow in the in the Holy Spirit and, uh, and we're like and what, she what's was up with that. 
she was such a massive part of of my entire conversion process. I, I like to say my conversion was in, in three steps. And, th and that first step was, yeah, I believe in this, Jesus. I, I totally do. I'm going to Mass. I mean, I can't say after I made that conclusion that anything changed, right? Uh, I'm still struggling. I mean, I, I don't really, I didn't really enjoy it or participate very much, but I was there. I was trying to listen a little bit more. And really at that time in my life, I was still struggling here. I made this conclusion that Jesus is alive and real. And I wanted to live, I, I wanted to learn more about it. And I believed it, but you know, I was still struggling physically. My, my bad habits in terms of sin and drinking and smoking and language and even, even software that I was, you know, probably not uh, supposed to share the way I was sharing it. I mean, those habits just continued. And then one day uh, in uh, on August uh, 14th, 1993, uh, just a little more than 30 years ago, uh, my wife, Jenny says, Hey, Dom, I think you got to come down and see this talk, right? Th this is great. Like, this is going to help you come on down. And I said, all right now, Jen, and <laughs> it's like, I'm busy. She said, no, come on down. You're going to love this. So I go down and she hits play um, on the VCR. She just recorded it half an hour earlier and it's this preacher talking about peter and, and the apostles at pentecost in that room right second uh, chapter of acts whole, yeah waiting for the holy spirit to come and the preacher saying hey these guys were afraid as you mentioned they ran and hid they even see jesus alive they just go out fishing after that i mean nothing had really changed until this pentecost moment and he explained all that and he said look if you're struggling in your life right now just ask that holy spirit to become yes. a part of your life yeah. Right. And say, Holy Spirit, I receive you now in Jesus's name. So, I, I mean, I say that prayer because I really was wanting something. Like I said, I was struggling. And at that moment, the moment I said the prayer, I could feel the goosebumps. I kind of feel them again right now. Actually, were you, were you feel... expecting were you expecting goosebumps? I had no clue. What... So you didn't I... rev up these emotions. No. In my, in my apologetic journey. Right. I'm trying to figure out, is God real? And did he create the universe and did Jesus rise from the dead? I mean, the Holy Spirit didn't really play a big part of that apologetic kind of journey, right? Right. So now I, I, I get introduced to this whole thing about Pentecost and 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 I say, yeah, I'm going to say that prayer right now. So I say this prayer, right? That night was Saturday night, August 14th, 1993. The next moment, and I mean, this happened for about a three, <laughs> four week period of time. Yeah. The next morning, I should say, I'm I'm in a discussion with Jen and we're supposed to get somewhere and we're on a, we're we're late and I, I kind of get aggressive and I hear this little voice say to me, Is that really gonna help you? And I'm thinking, well, wait, 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 go going back. You did you say you when you when you prayed that prayer, what happened at that moment? What did anything I happen? felt I felt goosebumps? I did. I mean, I felt them even more than when that moment I kind of received Jesus. And I, I didn't I don't know what that meant. I just felt mm -hmm. something kind of go through my body and I I kind of felt that. And it was a physical feeling for sure. You know, but yeah. uh, I didn't I didn't know what it was about. I, I didn't know what happens after I said the prayer. I, I didn't really know much about the Holy Spirit at all. Right. Right. He's a person. And we and, and you know, we we, we kind of neglect him. Right. And right. There, there's there is that there is that, you know, when we're baptized. We have all of the all of God, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But there is a special upwelling of the Holy Spirit, this releasing uh, yes. this, as, as, the, as Joel said, like rivers of living water springing forth from the desert. There is this. There is this sort of we as it was referred to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that 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 bubbling up, that releasing, and then then that bursting forth yes. of the Holy Spirit. So that so there is this little bit. You felt this 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 little experience, and then the next day you're you're about to like kind of get a little bit stressed out at your wife, and and you see that. And what happens? I mean, I literally hear this voice telling me, "How's that going to help you?" And and I, and I was stunned by it. But I was taken aback and I just kind of rested a bit there for a second and didn't carry on with whatever kind of knucklehead thing I was going to say. Right. But, you know, that was Sunday. Monday, I'm at work and I'm in a steel company here in Hamilton, uh, not too far from the Niagara area. And, uh, you know, a lot of swearing. Uh, the girls were chicks and babes, a lot of smoking. It was it was just a very rough, rough and tumble environment. Disrespectful and of women. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, a lot of Jesus C and a lot of GD and a yeah. lot of using the Lord's name in vain. And I was participating in that like everybody else. And here I am Monday morning and I'm getting ready to say something in, in, in a meeting, cigarette smoke there and all kinds of stuff going on. And, you know, it's like, no, God, d d and it wouldn't come out. And I, and I felt and heard that voice again. You wanted, I, you wanted to, you wanted to cuss. You just, wanted to ask, did, you wanted God to damn something, right? 
Right. And at, at that moment, it's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> the like, Holy Spirit stops you. Yeah. And this kept happening. I mean, and I'm going to make a long story short here, but within a three to four week period of time, I could swear in about four or five languages. I grew up in a very multicultural area. I, I, that swear habit was gone. It was you know, completely eliminated. Isn't, you know, that this, interesting, isn't that interesting how that that uh, for a man is is like a trigger point? You know, it's it's like it's like a, it, it's like there's that check. It's like a little jab from the Holy Spirit. You know, just check that, check that. You know, when I'm out about and people like, especially when I'm out on the golf course and you hear, you know, the reason why they call it golf is because they ran out of the other four letter words. <laughs> and there's this guy that golfs with us, and he's just always says J C. You know, he says he says, yeah, yeah. And like, and every time he says it, I just say the only name by which men can be saved. Yes. Amen. And leave it at that and leave it at that. So yeah. God's checking you. He's doing these little jabs and you're and, and, and you realize the Holy Spirit, that still small voice is speaking to you. That's what it, it is. It kept speaking to me when I was over drinking. I would catch it on the second drink. I mean, when I was going to, you know, give software copies to my friends, it was like, hey, you're you're taking jobs from people. And I'm like, when does this stop? Right? Oh, when you were pirate. You were pirating software and giving a it little away. bit of, you know, sharing software, which. Everybody oh, yeah. Did what's wrong with that? But you're yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, it was this just r kind of relentless uh, attack on my sin. And but, you know, what? I started to realize, wait, that this this guy, this Holy Spirit, he's with me constantly. I started to feel <laughs> I started to feel some other things in terms of, you know, a desire to pray, a desire to read the word. You know, I didn't have any when, when you read desires. the word, did it when you read the word did it seem to jump out at you more. Totally. Like I'm reading John chapter 14. I am the way I am the truth. I am the life. Right. I, I must have heard that my whole life. Now I'm reading it. Now I sense like, wait a minute, this, this, this way, this truth, this life, this, I think he's with me right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So right? it's a personal relationship. It's not, it's, it, it, it's not just a religious uh, ascent or a religious act. It's, it, it, you know, we have our, we have that it's, it's important. But it's also there's this knowing the one who knows you. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. And and to tell you the truth, the reason why I got to the prayer course was from that moment, you know, you know, my wife started to educate me a little bit in the faith. Both of us started to grow rapidly Fr from that it, Holy Spirit moment that I had. We we grew. I mean, I started to devour scripture. Uh, we started to learn devour about the church. Devour it. Devour it. It's like read it. Oh, read I'm going to do it. I should, Memo I should, memorize I, it. Right. I guess memorize I should read the Bible. I should read the Bible. <laughs> God wants me to. It's like you little open up and go. It's a love letter from God. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, this this verse here ties into that verse. One time, Dominic, I I, I read the Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the New Testament again in six weeks. Yeah, wow. Talk about That's being tough. ferociously hungry. But during I began to go, wow, how this all fits together when you read it in fast motion like that. You can see it. In fact, my mom, my mother and father, when they came into the renewal, uh, my dad, who's you know, assistant superintendent of schools, successful businessman later in life and public speaker, eventually became a deacon. But this is what my my dad, my stern six foot four, gnarly dad, would say. Oh, wow. Let me read this scripture verse to you. You know, there's that thrill when you know God's speaking to you, and His revealed word is just how can how can uh, no one? All these different authors that contributed the book, how would they know how all this would tie together like a beautiful tapestry? We're talking with Dominic and Neo, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about what about his 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 uh, his uh, journey with the Lord and this beautiful course that he has on dialogue with God. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Struggles. There's nary a man or a woman who hasn't had them. Every day holds out what we think are four sure events, but each day usually presents unanticipated proceedings, like a sick child, a flat tire, or a frozen computer. Since you're going to have a many you, struggles that is, might as well look at them in a way that can be helpful. Folks say, behind every cloud is a silver lining. In the daytime, clouds, even dark clouds, do have a sunny side up. The sun hasn't gone anywhere, it's there. Sunlight just hasn't poked through yet. It will. 
I see one major benefit from struggling. That'd be growing. No muscle gets strong without struggling against something else. Trees don't flourish unless they're pruned. Same goes for growing one's character. Of course, struggles can also build bad character. Just a matter of how you decide to deal with them, right? Plenty of folk blame God when something bad happens and then turn bitter and hard. And then just downright unlikable. Others, well, others humbly accept the bad, look to God, letting the struggle mature and shape them for the good, patiently waiting to see how it builds character, or it'll be used to the benefit of someone else. As sure as there's being the sunny side up of a dark cloud, good will come out of your struggles too. The sun, of God that is, is always with you, always on the other side of your dark cloud. Scripture says all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, work together for those that love God, and proven time and time again. This is Dan of the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, everybody. We call our show the Bear Wozniak Adventure, you know, because it I get to be on an adventure, but so do you. Your life is meant to be an adventure. Uh, and, and a lot of times, adventure is just kind of a romantic way of saying, man, you faced a lot of adversity in your life. But our job is turn, to turn adversity into adventure. And sometimes right now, there are people out there right now who are like, God, what are you doing wrong? Why is my life so messed up? Why can't I, you know, uh, you know, things just aren't working out. Well, there, there, someone once a long time ago told me about this, this uh, image of a guy petting a cat and the cat's back is just rising up. You know how they get really upset and it kind of like, you know, that, that arched back of the cat cat does not like being petted. Well, the reason why is because he's petting it against the grain of his fur. And you know what he's saying to the cat? Turn around cat, just turn around. So if the circumstances in your life are, 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 if you things just aren't working, maybe it's because you're going against the plan that God has for your life. And you know, God actually has a plan for your life. I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. Then he says, if you seek me, I will let you find me. But then he goes, well, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. So you're listening to this show. Maybe you're a, maybe you're a, a man who's just hasn't been able to somehow get traction with the Lord, but the Lord is here with you right now, and he he wants he wants you to turn around and look at him. He's looking at you, and he's looking at you with eyes of love and a plan. And you know why the plan is so good? Because he, the moment of your conception, no matter how you were conceived, maybe it was in the worst possible way, when the union of the, that man and woman came together, and your physical body. Uh, was conceived. God the Father, as we say in Hawaii, Makua, the Father, he at that moment had the intention and the will and the desire and formed in you and infused in you and fathered in you 
your spiritual, rational soul with the unique gifts and talents and abilities and desires because he has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. But that plan is realized not by having a map. It's by having a relationship. When God said to Abram, go to the land that I will show you, he didn't give him a map at all. He had every day, you know, Abram would get his uh, camels up together and his family and his flocks. And he, where are we going today, God? And the Bible says, I will give you a lamp unto my feet. So yeah, we may have a long di long distance view of our sense of how God's leading us, but God didn't give us like the, the total byline of our life because he wants us to walk with him in a personal relationship. Dominic Anea was here with us and he's the creator of Dialogue with God. We're talking a little bit about his personal journey. And then we're going to talk about this. How do you, how do you, is it, how do you have this, this personal relationship, this dialogue with God? So Dominic, you're, you are, you are continuing with your story a little bit more and we'll, we'll get into this course material that you have. Yeah. I mean, uh, my wife and I started to grow rapidly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I started to, uh, I participated in a prayer group. I became a prayer team leader. I became a member of the board of the prayer group, a very large prayer group in London, Ontario, uh, you know, uh, started to work in the parish, uh, uh, marriage preparation started to to lead and direct youth group and uh so we we just started that's to grow pretty rapidly. cool you did you worked with the youth yeah that's so exciting yeah. that's so exciting. yeah I, i've done that i did that for 15 years and and did mission trips with them to haiti and mexico city garbage dumps amazing it's amazing working with youth i still you, have a lot did you go to did you go them. to juarez did you go to juarez the garbage dump no there? mexico city yeah oh in mexico uh, city okay yeah right in the garbage dumps so long story short, I mean, we were growing, we were seeing the Lord move in our lives, we were praying for people, laying hands on people, seeking the Lord for all kinds of things, and just really being blessed by him in a lot of ways. But I would say about a seven year period of time of crazy growth, amazing, amazing growth in ministry and, and just love of the Lord. But I think ultimately what happened with me personally, right, was, you know, I'm working business in the day, I'm ministering all night, I'm writing talks all weekend, I'm giving talks on Sunday night. And speaking at high schools, whatever the case may be, I, I just started to, there were, an emptiness started to grow in me. And uh, I, I started to kind of feel like, you know, wow, this is a lot of work and am I missing something? And, it, and I kind of knew what I was missing, right? Because I'm I'm listening to the to, to the great Catholic preachers on, on TV and on the radio. And, you know, I got to build my relationship with God, right? And I don't really feel it that way. Like I knew Jesus was, was with me. I knew the Father loved me. I knew they were there, and, but I didn't really have like a, you know, let's say an intimate, uh, vulnerable, like any kind of transparent or real relationship with mm, them, you know? Mm. And the more I read that I should have that, the, the more I wanted it. And I like to summarize it like this. I mean, at the end of that whole process of emptiness and longing and, and, and wanting more, I just wanted, I wanted a dad. I, I really wanted a dad and, and I wanted to speak to him. You know, I wanted to be able to communicate with him because I knew he was there and I knew he loved me and I knew he was faithful and good. Right. But I, I wanted to figure out how to how to hear from hear him personally for me, like with my stuff. Right. Not just laying hands on people or praying for people or interceding for people. Right. I used to, I used to think of God the father as a father who would send child support checks, but didn't really want to hold me and have a right. Person. You know, that there was a distance there. And maybe a lot right. of men struggle with that too. Right. Yeah. Right. But I you I, wanted that Abba Father, that daddy experience of G that Jesus spoke of. Yeah. And I wanted and I knew G, who Jesus was. And I longed for I was the oldest in my family. I longed for an older brother. I mean, I just didn't have that voice. You know, my dad had passed away uh, oh, many years before. Okay. So he was gone. Uh, I was the oldest brother. I just didn't have that voice. I really wanted it. And I knew that. I mean, the great teachers. I mean, I'd listened to Ralph Martin talk about uh, prayer Great so many teacher. times. Great right? teacher. And, yeah. My first book was my first book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, was roughly based on his synthesis of uh, the spiritual journeys in his book, The Fulfillment of All Desire. Don't you love that book? Yes, I have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he he's a living prayer master. So yes. I mean, I, I'm living listening to him back then. Uh, you know, probably in the 2000 area, and. Uh, and I just thought, I got to have this. I, I got to do it. So I started reading everything about prayer, uh, listening to everything about prayer, trying everything about prayer. But you know what? It was frustrating. There's a lot of different terminology used. I mean, Ignatius says contemplation is this, and Teresa of Avila says meditation is that. And, you know, I would try things, 
And, and it really didn't work. So that whole process of trying to grow in prayer was very frustrating for me. Terminology wise, I couldn't really find examples of men around me or even women around me who actually did it. Right. Mm -hmm. who, who can say, well, this is what it sounds like. This is what it feels like. This is kind of how it, it proceeds. Well, right? during during that time, uh, going back a little bit, uh, did you did you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Did you pray in the spirit in tongues? Yeah, as I said, we grew grew substantially in in ministry and in, in yeah. service, and and a lot of that came through the charismatic renewal. To right, tell right, the right. Truth. We found but then, but the charismatic that, renewal. That that yeah. that um that um experience for me when I find I'm doing just the the prayer of intimacy when I'm just seeking intimacy. Uh, so often I just find myself. Uh, I have this habit of going out into the ocean and, and treading water for an hour every day. Yeah. And yeah. I'm out beyond the surf and I feel the rise and fall and I just focus on the Lord. And I may say, I may pray to the Father or I may pray to the Son or to the Holy Spirit Mary. or to Mary. Uh, but sometimes I just find myself uh, praying in the love language. Mm -hmm. And and you know what you know what Dominic's like? You can be seeking the Lord in all these ways, but eventually it's up to him to open. The, you know, you can go and present yourself. It's up to him to it's up to him to to respond and you know you, you can't make god do stuff you can show up but i was thinking here a long time ago i was thinking saying you know here in hawaii people are sitting on the beach on a cloudy day and they'll get roasted sunburns because they don't know the sun's shining through mm -hmm. thinking, that's a lot like our spiritual life sometimes we show up and we just invest our time with the lord and then it's up to the lord to respond to us you know uh but you still get a spiritual suntan whether or not he you experience him he's transforming you and uh, man i'm that is such a cool i'm so smart to come up with it and then i read augustine and he had already said it like two thousand years ago <laughs> yeah but so so yeah. you begin this journey uh, this uh, trying to understand getting past the the technique and and uh the language uh, of these great saints and trying to find a personal journey we're talking with Do dominic and neo and i've made a big mistake i've forgotten to tell people where they can find you uh, www.dialoguprayer.com and uh, we've got Deep Adventure discount all ready to go. <laughs> oh, you do? So people who are listening to the show? Yeah, people they... listen to the show, if they go to the website 50% off uh, for a short period of time here for the next little while, I'm not sure when this is going to air. Do, but... do they have to have a little code to use? Uh, no, no, just go uh, yeah, just go there and um, all, all set ready to go for your listeners. Were you stoked when you got that 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 that, that, that website was available? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple that we tried for, but that that was a thrill to tell dialogue you the truth. with God. That's, dialogue that's, prayer. Dialogue dialogue prayer dot com. com. Dialogue yeah. prayer dot com, and that's really what it's all about. Remember when God used to come down into the garden with Adam and Eve, and we yeah. call it pow, we call it pow Hana here when work is done, finished work, and they would just they would just commune together. Dominic and Air would be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. 
and you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome back. Want to let everybody know, long ride home with Bear Wozniak. The great motorcycle TV show uh, is airing now on EWTN. The new season, uh, season four, 11 episodes filmed in Hawaii Nei. Uh, when all my riders came out, we rode all around the island here. It uh, has great cinematic, you know, our, our TV show has won four tally awards. So it's it's not kind of like a so much a talking head type show, which are, are great. But this is just just the beauty of Hawaii just causes your soul to to journey towards the Lord. Plus, we have some really funny stuff in the show, too. So we invite you to go to EWTN and find out when it's going to be on and record it. Or you can become a member of the Mama Bears or the man cave at deepadventure.com. And there you get access to all 600 of our radio shows, uh, a full two and a half year read through and teaching out of the whole catechism line by line. And you get access to all 33 episodes of long ride home. And it's the YouTube version, by the way, of those. So you can, all of those are YouTube versions. So you can share them with your friends and maybe sneakily turn it on while they're, while one of your friends walks into the house and they can kind of get caught up by um, watching long ride home. You know, Christianity is caught more than it's taught. And so uh, you don't have to be the greatest theologian in the world. You just got to be a witness. I remember we have Dominic and Neil with us. Hey, Dominic, when my, when my dad first came to the Lord through the renewal, you know, he was, he was a Catholic, but he wanted that personal relationship. They, they, someone told him, well, you're, God, God wants you to be a witness. And he goes, is there going to be a car accident? I mean, what is it I'm supposed to witness? <laughs> you know, but all we need to do as Christians is just to share what Jesus has done in our lives. We don't have to have all the great theology. But so as God began to, you begin to want to go closer with the Lord, you have this analytical teaching gift. Right. So you began to look at it from that point of view. And then how did that right. develop? In in your in your in your study, in your in your course, dialogue with God, how did that beget develop? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just from the frustration, I just felt like it shouldn't have taken me two to three years to figure out how to do this on a consistent basis, right? And it was a struggle. I started, I stopped, I tried, I failed. But then there was a couple of key moments. Uh, I was leader of discipleship nights at the parish, and I, and, and I knew about a priest who, who knew how to pray, supposedly. And I said, come on down and come to the parish discipleship night. Pastor's on board. Come and teach us how to, prayer, how to pray. He taught us about the Ignatian meditation technique. And he said, look, when we do this technique, there's five ways God can speak to you. It might be a word. It might be a picture. It, it might be a, a physical feeling like a goosebump or a heat. It might be an interior feeling, a strength, a courage, or a peace, or it could be some type of a prompting of a memory or, or a thought or an idea. He said, that's it. He said, I mean, there's, he said, there's many, many ways he can speak to you in dreams and visions and the way and people speak into you and prophecy and all this stuff. But for this prayer experience right now, it's going to be one of these five ways. And he had a picture of a hand up on the board. And, and then we went through uh, an Ignatian exercise uh, of, of, of imagination and putting ourselves in the story. And then how I felt it. And, and, and it was a particular word. And I said to myself, I am going to do this every single day, you know, and from there, I went through the book of Mark, the book of John in that Ignatian meditation it took me about a year to get through all that and was just hearing the Lord and, and experiencing him in words and sometimes in picture, mostly in words every once in a while. And in, in a kind of physical feeling, I had a couple of experiences of where he hugged me. I felt a really and I, I just thought, you know what, I, I've got to help guys, I got to help men, I got to help people, but men were right on the back of my mind, like, I, I got to do this, because this is, it took me too long to figure it out. So, you know, I, like, I, I have done coaching, I had done a lot of teaching. So I put this, during COVID, I put this uh, video course together, eight lessons on uh, how to dialogue with God at uh, dialoguepair.com. And, and, and try to come up with five simple steps demystifying simplifying this idea of of a, of a intimate personal like um vulnerable transparent heart to heart genuine dialogue with god like back and forth mm -hmm. if i sent something from him 
and respond and then he responds back that that that's the goal and and i mean even sometimes just sitting in silence in his presence is is good enough right like you said our job is just to show up it's his job to you know, whether right. he wants to speak speak to us is up to right. him completely exactly right? yeah so we put this together uh we launched it and uh it's it, we just have had great response i think we're in 20 countries now um the the emails i get back about people who didn't know how to do this I, I, no one had showed me this before this is so easy compared to what i was trying to do um my prayer life has completely changed i feel like the lord is with me every morning you know it's it's just uh it's just been a tremendous blessing for us isn't it interesting how the lord i, I always say it kind of like well i had this sense from the lord yeah you know and then you learn uh to move on that sense well, maybe it was an image. A lot of times it's an image or maybe yes. it's a, just a, just a knowing, but the way, the best way to describe it is just, there's just kind of this sense. And as yeah. you ponder that, pray about it, kind of do your discovery and move on it. You begin to realize, oh, that, that, that was the Lord. And then it, he gradually right. brings that into focus. Like long ride home. The TV show came out of that. This radio show came yes. out of the back. Yeah. The books come out of that. And, um, but then and also it's, keep, just, it's, it's key bear that we do it every day. I mean, yes, you know, ba yes. basketball players shoot every day. Golfers practice, or at least the ones we're watching on TV on Sunday. They're on the course every day. They're practicing every day. And it's the same thing with our prayer life, right? I mean, we, we have to stay in sync. we got to get in that flow of, right. of being in his presence Staying every single sync. day. Staying in sync, right? Getting in that flow. So now when you feel that sense, right? I love what my friend Peter Herbeck says. He says, it feels like, it feels like, a light pressure on my chest, he says, when yes. I feel it, right? Yes. And, and I feel my shoulders drop, right? I feel a yes. relaxation when I when it's him, right? Yes. And yes. but but hey, if you're doing it only on, you know, on 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 Sundays, or if you're only doing it every couple of weeks, you're you're not gonna be as you don't, good you, at you, sensing that. It's like you're it's like watching a TV series, you know, how we power watch them now every day. We watch a series and you skipped eight episodes. If yeah. you're not checking yeah. in every day. Yeah. And I, right. and I know, like, like I said, for me, I have my liturgy, the hour, my time of reading and studying. But for me, I there's a there's a nudge in me to go down to the ocean and go out and swim. And that's my time. I dialogue with the Lord out there. There's a yeah. lot of ways that the uh, God will show you. It's very important to have a set. I think it's important because the word disciple has this word discipline kind of built into it. Yes. That you have a place that you that you, this is my prayer place. Yes. This is my, this is my, uh, like when I go swim, I can go right out in front. There's a beautiful swimming place right out in front. Mm -hmm. And I do a 20 minute walk to get there and to this other place that I go. There, there, there's a place that you go. Right. There's a, usually a time that you go there. Amen. <laughs> that's the time you have it. You actually have an appointment with God. I, I entered, I interviewed um, Christian Okoya, the great, they call he was known as the Nigerian night, nightmare, the great all pro running back from, um, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I didn't interview him. I took him out and taught him how to surf. And he was ripped. He was so strong. And it was years after yeah. he had retired. And I say, how do you stay so fit? I mean, he could hardly paddle. He was so strong. He couldn't lift his arms. And he goes, I have an appointment with myself every morning at six in the morning. You, and we need to have that kind of appointment, you know, with God. Yeah, this type of intimacy uh, we teach in the course, it, it's important to know what it sounds, looks, and feels like, but there's a preparation required, a place, a time, you know, to bring the passages of, of Scripture in. You want to come to prayer with a pure heart, like, you know, you do your examination of conscience the night before. Be, mm. So, hey, I'm dealing with some of my sins. I'm dealing, I'm thanking God for the great things he did for me today, but I'm getting rid of some of that 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 unforgiveness maybe that i have or some of that repentance i need to do now i come into you my mean, prayer do you closet. mean we have to get rid of unforgiveness i uh, it you know there's certain things there's certain big blockers <laughs> that's probably number one on the list bear that's that's yeah, probably number yeah. one on the list yeah, yeah. And, the, and yeah and it's, it's interesting how so much of our spiritual life boils down to other people yeah you know, how we respond to the other people it's like they 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 get they take off our rough edges don't they sometimes they're like a chisel sometimes they're like sandpaper but it's important that 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 voice that you hear of 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 bitterness towards someone you have to take care of that because bitterness you towards know, someone else's bitterness blocks you not just from them but it hardens your entire heart and you can't hear god's voice uh, we we talk in the Catholic in the Catholic spiritual life about the purgative, the illuminative, and the unitive stages, right, of growth uh, in union with the Lord. And 
a lot of times I say to people, you know, we get this great prayer experience. It happens for a few weeks, but he's going to deal with your soul eventually. He's going to oh, deal with those yeah. sins. Well, the he's going to deal with that unforgiveness. He's well, coming after with, that stuff. We're talking with Dominic Inio. What's what's your website again, Dominic? www.dialogprayer.com. Isn't it interesting as you read the life of Teresa Lisieux or, or uh, you know, all the great saints, they would talk about their sinfulness. And I, th I think it's like, you know, the closer you get to the Lord, it's like the light gets brighter and brighter. I just had uh, my cataracts removed, you know, at my mm. age, you kind of get this. And I look in the mirror and go, oh, my gosh, look at all those little pock marks. What are those little things on my <laughs> face? I never, you know, so the closer you get to the Lord, the more visibility you have, the more yes. you're aware of yes. these flaws in your, and, and, but the Lord, the way the Lord does this is he, you know, there's therefore no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the mm. law of the spirit of life and Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. However, the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and he says, do you really want to hold that 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 bitterness towards that person? Do you, do you really? He comes alongside us and sometimes he shines a light. We got to break. We got to break away, Dominic. I got, I'm giving you 30 seconds to make, to take us away. I was going to say, when, when you get into that flow every day with the Lord and you're meeting the Father and Jesus, it's great. You're talking to them. It's awesome, right? But to your point, as your day goes on, you're you're walking with the Holy Spirit now. While you're while you're working, while you're singing, while you're writing, while you're playing basketball, while while you're doing it in action, you just open the door for that Holy Spirit to be with you now through the rest of Amen. that day, and He's going to be with you, brother. Let's count that as a prayer for all those who are listening and longing for this walk with the Lord. And you can go to uh, your website again, Dominic. www.dialogprayer.com I've heard of www. Is that one of those internet doohickey things? Of course, he's Real an IT quiet. guy. He, he knows all that stuff. Dominic Ganeo, thank you for joining us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thank you, Dominic. That was refreshing. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you, sir. You're I, very kind. I, I get very excited, and sometimes I jump in when I shouldn't. It's I'm not the best interviewer that way, but um, you know, it's kind of the whole. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.